Hear us, O Lord, and have mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, who calls us to conversion, be with all of you. As we gather together through the power of technology to give thanks and to give praise to God. We're ever mindful of God's infinite love and his infinite mercy. We are mindful that we sometimes fail and we are truly sorry. But with confidence and courage, we dare to say, Lord Jesus, you call all of us to conversion. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise all of us eternal life with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Gilead and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ready a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord.
letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight 
until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. <clears throat> for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age. Question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, that is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from. Yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not all so blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see. So your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory and praise to you. Today we gather together as church because church is not this building. We are the church. And so as you can imagine, those of you who know me, it's very difficult to be in a church without you here. I mean, who am I going to pick on? I wanted to put all your faces on the pews so I would feel more comfortable. But that's not what we've done. We gather together today, and certainly many of us, our hearts are very, very heavy. Certainly some of us are living in perhaps anxiety and fear because 
none of us have probably lived through a pandemic before. I know I probably missed that class in seminary on how to pastor during a pandemic. And yet, I know that my heart is with God, and I know that he gives me, hopefully, the wisdom I need to help us all through this difficult time. It is so important that we gather together to celebrate Mass, because in celebrating Mass, we gather together knowing that God is with us, whether in this building or in the privacy of your room or wherever you are as you watch this. Today, we hear from the Gospel of St. John. And those of you who are regular parishioners here know that John's Gospel is the last, see, I'm still going to teach, is the last Gospel to be written. And as the last Gospel to be written, his community had time to reflect on who Jesus was. We are mindful that as John writes his Gospel, he draws heavily from the Hebrew Scriptures. In fact, in very many ways, he's rewriting the Hebrew Scriptures in the context of Jesus. Which is why he begins with his Gospel with the same exact words as the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God said, in the beginning was the Word. We are mindful as we hear today's Gospel that there was a tension in John's community, that it was during a time when those who began to follow Jesus were no longer welcome in the synagogue. And we hear that rather clearly when John has us hear the voices of the man, the man who was born blind, parents. That's exactly what they say. They were afraid they would be thrown from the synagogue. We are always mindful with every gospel that Jesus has a mission. And the mission statement of Jesus in John's gospel is, for God, see, I would call on you now, but you're off the hook. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son, that all who believe in him might have eternal life. John's entire gospel is about believing in him and about having eternal life. Today's gospel story is no different. And so we hear this story, and it presents before us many different uh, things and many different theological stances. And it begins with this man who was born blind and people at the time saying, oh, he's born blind because of his sin or his parents' sin. And as we heard in our first reading, Man does not see as God sees. Because we know throughout the scriptures and throughout our human existence that that's sometimes what we think, isn't it? I even heard through this pandemic, oh, God is punishing us because of abortion. Or God is punishing us for our stance on immigration. Or God is punishing us for our greed. Or God is punishing us. This is about God punishing us. We've seen that over and over again. That's as much true today as it was 2,000 years ago. And certainly St. John is going to make a point to us that God is not a God who is punishing us. We hear that the man is born blind not because of his sin or his parents' sin, but it's part of our human condition. There's blindness. There's sickness. There's pandemics. There's hurricanes, as we know well. This is part of the fallen condition of humanity. It's no one's direct fault. And so we hear that Jesus comes to this man who was born blind. And he gets spittle and dirt and puts it in his eyes. Now, we are very mindful, as I said, that St. John is kind of rewriting salvation history in the context of Jesus. And we're very mindful in the story of Genesis where God takes the clay of the earth and he forms it into a man and gives him life. It's very much part of Jewish tradition that when God formed man out of clay, he used spill. And so now we hear Jesus 
who does this very powerful action. And St. John is saying to us, look, folks, Jesus is like God. He makes the connection between Jesus and the Father in this story alone. We know throughout John's gospel, it's the gospel where we constantly hear Jesus say, I am, knowing that that's God's name. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth. I am. And now we hear Jesus acting like God and forming clay and putting it in the man's eyes. And when he does that, the man is able to see. We know that in John's gospel, there are no miracles per se. He calls them signs. And they're signs because they always point us somewhere deeper. And so we hear as Jesus opens his eyes, he says, Now go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. That's a very powerful word in John's gospel. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son. He now sends this man to these waters, which means sent. At the end of John's gospel, we hear Jesus in the Last Supper scene, send us. As I have been sent, so now I send you. Obviously, for us, this points to baptism. As the man who was born blind goes to that pool of Siloam, he's then sent. Now, one would think that that miracle or that sign would be enough for everyone. But it's not. And they want to say, well, obviously, you know, this man is a sinner. Because he does this on the Sabbath. Exactly. Because John is connecting Jesus to God. And so they want to continue to refuse to believe. We hear them say, oh, well, obviously he wasn't always blind. Because you see, that's how man sees things. They always find excuses for the way they want to see reality, not the way God sees reality. And so once again, the man tells them, he put clay in my eyes, and I was born blind, and yes, I can see. We hear how they go ask the parents of the man born blind and how they're afraid to say anything lest they be thrown out of the synagogue, and they say, well, go ask him. He's an adult. He'll tell you. Again, they ask him. He tells them. We then hear at the end of the story that they refuse to see. And the blind man says to them, how come you, who are people of faith, can't see? And me, a man who was born blind, can see. And we kind of switch the whole story from a physical blindness to a spiritual blindness. We hear the man once again approached Jesus. And Jesus says to him, do you believe? Remember the mission of Jesus. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son that all who believe might have eternal life. And he says to the man, do you believe? And the man says, yes, I believe. And we know that in his belief, he has eternal life. And so, we hear this powerful story of a God who is not punishing us, but a God who is with us, and a God who wants to give us eternal life. Well, how is that relevant today? How is that relevant in our world of anxiety and fear and what we're going through? Yesterday, probably against better judgment, I went to Publix. And as I left Publix, one of our parishioners was also leaving Publix. I do more ministry at Publix than I do here, just saying. And as I was leaving Publix, a parishioner, Pat, said, Father Phil, here, I just bought this food. Bring it for the food pantry. That's 
eternal life. Last night, I got a phone call from a parishioner, Mike and Leanne, and they said to me, Father Phil, you know, we're physically able. Is there anyone who needs shopping done or anyone who needs anything? Please let us know. That's eternal life. This morning, we gathered together in our, under our pavilion, and we kept reasonable distance, six feet from everyone, and we made eggs, and we made food, and we fed those who are hungry. We gave them to-go boxes, and they kind of separated out, and they were able to eat. That's eternal life. That's what it means to believe in Jesus and to be sent. Today we gather knowing that God is with us in good times and in bad times. We know that he promises us eternal life and we live that life now. Not when we die, but now. In our Lady of Lords, we live it by loving the God we cannot see, by loving the neighbor we can. Even while you're home, please connect to each other. Call each other. Find out if anybody needs anything and then call me and we'll do whatever we can to help people. Because that's what it means to belong to a community. That's what it means to be part of this body of Christ. As you know, one of the disciplines of Lent is prayer. And I think we need to pray. I think we need to pray to calm ourselves and to allow God's breath to be in us and for us to breathe his breath. To find some solace, to find some peace, to find some comfort. I'd like to close by sharing a poem with you, a poem that was um, from an Irish priest. And I, I think it just... Um, hopefully can help in this difficult time. His name, oh, his name is Richard Hendricks. He wrote this. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they sat in Wuhan after so many years of noise that you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary, all over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that, yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now. Today, breathe. Listen. Behind the factory noises of your panic, 
The birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul. And though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before our God with these our needs. For the church, that she may lead us to see all God's children through the eyes of love, and guide us as we work for love and justice in our world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us in positions of authority, that we use every effort to protect the lives and welfare of those who are most vulnerable or in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us who are desperate for basic human rights, that we have courage to support them and work to restore their dignity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who experience anxiety, fear, or loneliness because of the coronavirus, that we open our eyes to the needs of our family and neighbors and be the light of Christ that our world needs during this difficult time, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering, that they receive the care they need, and for all medical staff and volunteers helping those affected, that they stay safe and healthy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Madeline Robinson, Thomas Hickey, Barbara Harris, Michelle Boyce Claire, Cleose Estralaga, and all who have died from the coronavirus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Trusting in your love and mercy, we come before you with these our needs through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And if you're gathered with anyone, offer them the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements, as you know. We usually have our second collection at this time for our school, but I do thank all of you who are able to give online. We certainly appreciate you giving to our... We never want to come before God without offering some kind of gift. So I do thank you for your generosity in our first collection and possibly even our second collection. You're able to do that by giving online. We'll maybe try to post something so you can know how to do that. Um, as you know, we do have, or you may not know, we do have a box outside of the breezeway. If you'd like to bring food... Um, you can just drop it off there, and we're emptying er every day so that we have continue to have food for our hungry brothers and sisters from our pantry. Again, if you need to talk or you need to pray or you need me in any way, shape, or form, you can call me personally. My phone number is 386-295-5284. If you do call the parish office, technology, we have call forwarding and it goes to my cell phone anyway. So I do want to be available. I am here for you. I can pray with you over the phone. I can talk with you. I can do whatever you need me to do. Again, if you are stranded, need food, need anything, we're here for each other. We are a community where we care about each other, and I do believe our community has that sense of eternal life, and so we are here to bring that life to each other. Again, please don't hesitate to contact me. The Lord be with you. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.